Welcome back everybody to the Zenith Super Duty build. This video was going to be an update on the panel and the electrical system, but I'm waiting for a few parts, like little terminals and stuff for the wire that I ordered just yesterday. So when those parts get in, I'll finish up just a, connecting up a few wires and I'll make that video. So while I'm waiting for those parts, I decided to work on the back end of the airplane. What I want to work on now is the up and down stops for the elevator. You can see I have the elevator attached here and there's a certain place where it needs to stop up and a certain place down. And looking at the plans, up is 152 degrees. And you can see that right in the plans here, it gives you 152 degrees up. So here's my super high-tech jig that I made, a piece of cardboard. I measured 152 degrees and then cut it out. And that way when I put this on top of the elevator, I mean the stabilizer, full up will be even with the back there. Having an extra set of hands around the hanger would be kind of handy, but since I don't have that, I make do with what I have and what I need to do is find the up position and so I'm just putting a ladder under the elevator and you can see it's not up far enough so I just slide the ladder in that raises the elevator a little bit more and I check it with my jig and I think it still needed to go up a bit more so there's up a little bit more I'll check it with the jig and if that's perfect then I can mark the location of the up stop uh, with the elevator in the correct position. Here you can see how that works. I put one half on the top of the stabilizer and with the elevator in the correct position, the back half of the jig sits level on the elevator. This big thick angle piece is the up stop and I've drilled one hole in it and put a bolt in it so that I can mark or get a drill bit started in the other hole to get a perfect alignment of the two holes. With that angle bolted in piece, I'm using my angle drill here, not to drill the other hole, but just to get it started, just to put a mark on it so that I can take it off and put it in a drill press and get a perfect hole. Here you can see that little mark that the drill put on there. I could have tried to just drill the hole with in the center of the hole that I marked in pen, but you know, if you get the alignment just a tad off, then the two holes aren't going to line up. So I prefer to drill one hole and then mark the other one, take it off and then drill the other hole. And now I have all the holes perfectly aligned. And of course, once that small mark is already there, it's easy just to put a drill bit through there and then uh, open it up to 3 16 and now with the two holes in the stop, I can just put two bolts through there and bolt it in place. Here it is installed. It's temporarily installed because it will come off for paint. And you can see how that works. This horn just hits the stop. It works nicely, it's simple. And I've drawn a pen line on here because as you can see, this whole area right here is useless that doesn't do anything. So I'll, I'll wind up cutting this off along that line. And there we go. I can move on to the bottom stop. For the bottom travel limit, you can see it's 208 degrees from the top surface. So I've made another handy dandy little jig here. I've measured 280 degrees, I mean 208 degrees which is just 180 plus 28. And I've cut that out, so that part is scrap. And uh, this will be the jig. Now, you might notice when you move the elevator down, the, the leading edge of the elevator sticks up. So I'm probably gonna have to cut a section out right here just to give clearance for the front of, or the leading edge of the elevator. I guess this kind of gives you an idea of how this little jig works. I put the one half, 
on the top of the stabilizer. And then what I'll do is I'll put the elevator in the correct position so that it's flush with the cardboard jig. And then I can install the downstop. I can't put this ladder under the elevator to hold it in the proper position. But what I've done is I've taken this little wooden block and slid it fore and aft just to get it in the right position. And you can see now when I take my jig here, it sits flat on the top and then flat there. So this is uh, the correct down position. And with that held in place, I can install the down stop. This is the down stop here. And I should have looked ahead a little bit because I was always wondering what that hole was for right there. And you can see I've already put a rivet here, but this thing just gets riveted right there. And that's the down stop. So I'm gonna have to drill out this rivet. And I probably didn't even really need to measure it because the holes are already drilled on here. And you can see that's like a perfect fit. So right at the 208 degrees, that's right where they have it there. So all I need to do is drill out that rivet and I can install the, the stop. And I think what I'm going to do is just to make it look nice and so the paint doesn't get scratched on here, I think I'm going to polish this nice and shiny. So I will rivet this on after this is all painted. And you can see I've done that on my cruiser with these pieces here. If these were painted, and same with this, if this was painted, every time you go to full rudder travel, you're gonna start chipping the paint off of there and it's gonna look bad. So I just polished these instead of painting them. And I think the nice polished look really looks nice. It doesn't have to be painted. It just gives it some contrast and I don't have to worry about the paint chipping. So that's the same thing I'm going to do with my elevator downstop. With the downstop bolted in place, here's how it works. It just hits that big, thick rudder support bracket, and that's the downstop. And I wanted to show you on the bottom here, you can see at the end of this big slot, this little slot I cut out here, and that is because when the elevator comes down, that bottom arm, it goes forward. So you're gonna probably have to cut this out on yours. Uh, no big deal, it's just thin aluminum here. So it just opens up a slot for the control arm. And I'll probably put a little bit of a stiffener around here just because this part here gets kind of flimsy. With the up stop and the down stop complete, I wanted to put the rest of the back end together to get it ready for the next step. All right, I think what I want to start working on next is the fiberglass fairing that's going to go around the horizontal stabilizer. Now, if you guys are new to the channel, I did do the same thing here on my cruiser. I made this fiberglass fairing that starts here and it goes all the way around to the other side. It's all one piece. It goes up above and all the way back there. And I want to do the same thing on my Super Duty, but this one will be a little bit different. It's going to be two pieces because it doesn't need to go up and around here. It's basically gonna start here and go around. And if I can show you on the other side, I've kind of drawn on here where I think the, the fairing will, will go. So it's going to go there. I'm thinking about having it come down and kind of cover this seam here. I don't like how these two pieces of aluminum don't match evenly, so I'd like to cover that up. I definitely want to cover this up, so I'll have, a, have it come out around here and then sweep back to here, and it'll come all the way back, and on the bottom, it'll come up like this. And I've kind of drawn on here some screw holes where maybe I'll just put a couple screws to hold it on. And then one of the other things I want to do is, you can see where I have this white piece of paper. I want to make just a flat piece of aluminum here that will cover this entire hole here. So it'll, it'll rivet right here. And then what I'll do is there's a line of rivets right here that hold the top skin on, just like these ones here. I'll drill these out and then drill it all, I mean, rivet it all together like that. 
So when, when the elevator's fully down, it'll be closed. And you can see what that would look like from the top. You can see how it's cut there. And then when I move the elevator up, let me see if I can get this on the camera. If I go all the way up until it's on the stop, then the paper is cut to fit there. So it, it'll rot the, ele the elevator will rotate right around it like that. And then since the left side here has this elevator trim cable, I'm probably just going to make a slot, just a little slot. It only needs to be about two inches in here. And then this cable will go through that slot. So this will all be sealed. And what that does is it really cleans up the airflow on the back of the airplane. Because without this, all of this is open and the air can, can move left and right. So that will really clean it up. And I, I think actually have a good aerodynamic benefit to it. I also made a piece like that on my cruiser. And that's this piece right here. It comes down here, it might be hard to see, it comes over like this. And it closes up as much as that gap as I could. Obviously you still have this open so the elevator can move down. But, you know, I did close up that much of the gap there. Well, I've done some rearranging of the shop. I've spun the airplane around 180 degrees because I'm going to be working on the back end. And I figure it's just a lot more convenient to have that over where all my tools and workbenches are. I've put the rudder on the airplane. And what I need to work on next is this up here. I need to get this piece mounted, but as you can see, there's a quite a bit of the rudder that has to be cut out. And I've kind of marked on here where this interferes with the rudder. So I don't know what I want to do yet. If I just want to trim it down like this or continue this back and make a big sweeping curve like this. I'm not sure what would look better. And if I have this huge space right here, if there's a way to put a fairing on there to fill that up. So once again, I got to spend some time burning some brain cells to figure that out. So anyway, here's the uh, current status. It's starting to look more like an airplane, right? All right, everybody, that's the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Like I said, the next video will be an update on the panel and the electrical wiring. And the reason I want to make that video is really just for me, because I'm thinking five years down the road when I need to look at some wiring or remember how things were connected or where some wires were routed, uh, I'll be able to reference the next video I'm going to make and really take a good look without the glare shield and everything on while everything's open. Because once everything's closed up with that glare shield and the windshield and everything else, you know, the only access I have to the panel is from under it, or if I take out the two big Dynon screens, I can get in it, into it from there. But I made a video like that with my cruiser a long time ago, and that video has been pretty helpful a couple times when I had to go back and kind of remember how I did things or see where a wire was routed or whatever. So uh, the next video is really just going to be a run through of all the wiring. You may find it inter interesting or you may not. But like I said, the next video is really just going to be for me so that uh, I have a reference, you know, years down the road. But uh, you might find it interesting. At least you'll see how I ran some wires and how I did it. And uh, if that helps you wire your airplane, then great. <laughs> so we'll see you on the next video.